There is something very empowering and sensual about leather. When you put a harness on, you're making a decision to express your sexuality and explore your desires. Harnesses are sort of having a moment now in fashion. People like little Nas X wearing them to like red carpet events. My name is Emma Alamo and I make leather bondage harnesses for femmes and queers of all shapes and sizes. So these are all the patterns for the harness I'm about to make. There are hella taboos around the kind of stuff that I make. Our culture is still scared of women feeling sexually empowered and also terrified of queer sexuality. Designing a harness is one thing, but then scaling it to be able to fit all sorts of bodies and also taking into account the way people are gonna move in it. And there's a lot to think about with that. These discs have blades to bevel all four sides of a strap at once. So it'll be a lot more comfortable. I struggled with an eating disorder in middle and high school and it is very fulfilling to make people feel more connected to their body. There's a long history of leather in the queer community stemming from leather daddies in the 50s, big bulldog harnesses. It has become more versatile for all sorts of queers and just people who have fun sex. For these bigger holes, I use this foot press and then I will punch these parts out. What we call the pounding station. all of the edges are rounded. So now I'm gonna dye them so that they're the same color, if not a little bit darker than the surface of the leather. And then it has this roller in it that soaks up the dye so that you can just roll the piece along the edge to dye it. The kind of leather I do is like gay and subversive. And then there's like gun holster, cowboy leather workers, the other end of the political and social spectrum, but we kind of work in the same medium and I'm gonna put some beeswax on the slicker and then a combination of oils and waxes. And it will compress the fibers on the edge. If you look closely, you can see it's a lot smoother of a finish. I'm still kind of figuring out my gender identity and coming to terms with existing in a woman's body and whether or not I'm comfortable with that. I grew up in North Florida, so it was like very Christian, and I was lucky enough to have liberal parents. My mom knew that I was queer before I did. She basically was like, you know I love you no matter who you love. And I was like, I don't know, I don't know. But uh, it still terrified me. So I have come a long way. <laughs> All right, let's put those grommets in. They should fit in there snugly. I would be able to make one start to finish in about two and a half, maybe three hours, but that's after two years of preparation to get that design and my experience making it to where it needs to be. So this stamps my name on it. So she is finished now. In putting on this set, I feel like I'm like stepping into a more confident and powerful version of myself. It has the compression of a corset because it's really tight, but it doesn't go down all the way, so it, it's not like actually sitting on your organs or anything. Both of these, I feel like, really accentuate the wearer's figure and are still comfortable and have this powerful like goddess slash superhero energy to them. When I tell people I make leather harnesses for a living, they're frequently like, oh, for like dogs and horses. And depending on who's asking, sometimes I'm like, sure. <laughs>